Hi everyone, it's Marissa from BumblebeeApothecary.com and today I'm going to show you how to make a cauliflower soup. This is going to be a blended cauliflower soup that is perfect for the very earliest stages of the GAPS introduction diet. So one of the biggest challenges that comes up when you're following the GAPS diet, especially the earlier stages of the GAPS introduction diet, or even just as you've been on the diet for a while, you want variety. It can be hard to adjust to a certain list of allowed and non allowed foods and figuring out all the different things that you actually can make can be challenging. And the good news is there is actually a huge variety of foods available even on those very early GAPS introduction stages. And one of my goals for right now is to share as much variety with you on this channel as far as recipes for the GAPS diet, especially thinking about those earlier stages of the GAPS introduction diet, but also just know that they are perfect for anybody anywhere on the GAPS diet, later intro stages also, as well as the full GAPS diet. So this is one of my favorite soups. It's really easy to throw together. It's really delicious. Let's jump into the recipe. So to make this, you can use either frozen broccoli or fresh broccoli. I have frozen broccoli and just remember, especially on those early gaps intro stages, you wanna make sure that you get rid of anything fibrous. So if you have fresh broccoli, for instance, you wanna make sure to trim away all the big fibrous stalks that are on those. I just have little tiny frozen broccoli florets, and so I'm not gonna worry about doing that. And then also I have some nice beef meat stock here. It's very, very collagen gelatin rich. And remember the way that you get meat stock to be this gelatinous is to number one, not use too much water. And then also you wanna be using the correct types of meaty bones. You want to be using ones that have connective tissue. Let's get started. First thing I'm going to do is just add my broccoli to the pot and it's fine to start with it frozen just like this. Next I'm going to cut up one onion and add that. So you can adjust this recipe to be whatever amount that you want, but I find that this is a really good amount either to make for a family, or if you're just one or two people, you can make this much and then freeze it for later. That is one of my best tips for the GAPS diet is whenever you make some type of a soup or something like that, freeze some of it for later, and then you have so much variety at your fingertips down the road. So the amount of broccoli that I used that was frozen is two 10 ounce bags and then one onion. And then for the meat stock, I usually like to just kind of cover everything with meat stock and then I have about a quart of meat stock here, which I think is going to be just fine. I'm just gonna add that. And then as I'm sure you know, this will melt as it heats up. And then since this meat stock is so gelatinous and solidified right out of the refrigerator, it's hard to tell exactly how much I have in relation to the vegetables in here. But I think that once it heats up, it's not going to be enough to be covering them. So I may end up adding a bit of water, which is fine. So I'm gonna go ahead and add this or put this on the stove and start heating it. I'm going to try to bring it to a boil first like not a huge rough rolling boil but just where it starts to boil and then I'm gonna bring it down to a simmer and cook for 20 to 30 minutes. So if you're struggling with something like a lot of diarrhea, chronic diarrhea, ulcerative colitis, Crohn's disease, things like that, you wanna make sure that you cook your vegetables, especially in those early stages, very, very soft. And so I would go more towards 30 minutes, even longer, it wouldn't hurt. But 20 to 30 minutes is what I usually do. So I'm gonna bring this over here and turn it on. All right, and as this is heating up on the stove, I just remembered, I forgot, I also like to add a few cloves of garlic. So I'm going to peel those and then just cut them up and add them to the pot as well. <laughs> So as you can see, as it's starting to cook, it does not cover all the vegetables. So I am gonna add just a little bit of water, which is fine. I'm not worried about the meat stock becoming too watered down because it was really concentrated and very gelatinous. So a little water is not gonna be bad. 
All right, that's pretty good. That's about the level I'm looking for, just to make sure everything is, you know, that there's enough liquid. While we're on the subject of meat stock and everything, let's talk for a second about meat stock. And sometimes, you know, when you're cooking for the GAPS diet and you're getting the hang of making meat stock, you might have meat stock that doesn't gel in the refrigerator. Like it doesn't get as thick as you just saw mine does. And let's talk about that for a second because some people get really worried about that. So there's a couple of reasons why that can happen. Number one, using too much water. So if you use too much water, but you use the right kind of meaty bones with a lot of connective tissue, then that's okay. It's still going to have all the same properties. It's just going to be more diluted. And then you'll just have to drink more of it to get those same benefits and that's fine. The other reason why it can tend to not gel or turn out, you know, not as thick is if you didn't use the right cuts of meaty bones with enough connective tissue. And sometimes people wonder, well, should I still drink it or should I just toss it? And I always say, go ahead and still drink it because even if it doesn't have as much collagen and gelatin and stuff in it, it will still have the amino acids and different things like that. So it's still good. I would still use it. Also, I'm not adding any salt and pepper at this stage because when I make my meat stock, I add the right amount of salt and ground pepper or peppercorns, depending on what stage. For the early gap stages, you want to use peppercorns and strain them out. But anyway, my meat stock was made already with that type of stuff. And since I did add a little bit of water, I may want to add just a little sprinkle of salt, but I'll probably taste it once I get towards the end and see then. But that's just always good to keep in mind that you did add seasonings when you made the meat stock. So don't go overboard with salt or you may not even need to add any once you're using that meat stock to make a soup. Let's put on the lid so that it comes to a boil a little bit quicker. Filming is so much easier with this new setup. You're very buttery. Let's wipe you up. There you go. I want to see mama. You want to see? Okay, come here. It's gonna be broccoli soup. Do you like broccoli soup? All right, so here's what we're looking for when it comes to a boil. You can see it actually breaking the surface like that. So at that point, I'm going to add a lid and then I'm going to turn it down to like medium low and set my timer. I'm just gonna do 20 minutes. All right, and then when that time is up, we're gonna come back and I'll show you the next steps. All right, now our timer has gone off and I'm going to take the lid off. And you can see everything is cooked down really nicely. So the next step is to add some fat and then blend it together. So I like to add butter to this, but what you add is really gonna depend on where you're at on gaps and what you're doing well with. You could add ghee, you could add tallow, you could add lard, chicken fat, duck fat, goose fat, so many options. I'm going to do some butter, about half a cup I feel like, probably a bit more than half a cup, but that's okay. Another option is you can add fat to the individual bowls as you serve it up if you're really needing to keep track of how much fat you're eating and going towards a target amount, which a lot of us are on gaps. So that's definitely another way to do it. I'm This time I'm just gonna go ahead and add it right now. All right, and then the next step is to blend everything. So if you have a glass blender, you could blend it in a blender. You could also wait for it to cool and blend it in a plastic blender. My favorite way is to use a stick blender or an immersion blender and do it right in the pot. So I'm going to do that now. And the amount that you blend is really up to you. I like to leave it a little on the chunkier side, so it's not like a complete puree, but you can really do it as much or as little as you want. This is going to be soup, and then it's ready to serve into bowls. That's right. That's for me. I also want to mention that this type of soup, a blended soup like this, is one of my favorite ways when you get to the point where you start adding raw egg yolks into your food on gaps. And the reason why I like this is because in a soup like this, you add the egg yolk, stir it around, and it disappears. You can't see it, you can't taste it. So if you're somebody who is a little unsure of the idea of eating raw egg yolks, like how is this gonna taste? Am I gonna like it? And you know, all that kind of thing, then this is a really nice way 
way to do it because you don't even know it's there. And so I really recommend that. And then there are a few other toppings that I really like for this type of a blended soup. I like to add cultured cream. So if you have Gaps Sour Cream or Creme Fresh, otherwise known as cultured cream. So this is cream that has been cultured with yogurt culture or kefir culture. Then this makes a really delicious topping. So I'm gonna add some of that. And then also another thing, if you're on full Gaps and you're having the soup is you can add cheese. You can sprinkle some nice cheese on there. It will melt when it gets hot and it's delicious. So I'm gonna go ahead and add some of those toppings now. This is some of my favorite raw cheddar that I get from Azure Standard. There will be a link to them down in the description box below. Hello. Hello. Clever much you want. And then a nice dollop of cultured cream. Or two. Or three. Or three. You know what's good, don't you? All right, and then it's ready to enjoy. And then like I was talking about before, when you taste it and you think, oh, that could use a little salt, you can add it when you're eating. The meat stock already had plenty of salt in it. So I hope that you enjoyed that recipe. I hope that you give it a try. Check out that description box for links to where I like to get my cheese and some other of the grocery items that I like. Also check out that description box for links to free eBooks and other goodies for this video. Yeah. If you did like this video, give it a thumbs up. Share it with anybody else who you think would like some more Gaps recipes. And if you're new to my channel, please hit that subscribe button. I get out two new videos every week on nourishing recipes and natural living. Thanks so much for watching. See you next time. Bye. Bye. Bye.